Welcome to Team O'Neill. I'm Chris. I'm joined by Jared and Tyler, two of our instructors here at the Rally School, but also guys that have some extra skills. Tyler's brought his Mustang up here, and we've got Jared who helped build my, my Fiesta Rally car. And what we wanted to do today is actually talk about the differences between what you could spend on a rally car and what you could spend on a track car for about an eighty to a hundred thousand dollar budget. So it's more than a little. This is definitely, you know, not your bottom budget racing, but it's a, if you had a little bit of money, a little bit of effort that you wanted to spend and wanted to go racing, rally or tarmac, um, then we have some options for you. So let's get in the shop and see what's under these hoods of these cars. What is, what is this Mustang, obviously? So this is called a Mustang FR500S. Um, it's a Ford Performance Factory built car. They made them for a series back in, I think it was 2009, called the Miller Cup. Um, and it was basically a spec series. So these cars were made for that series. And then after that series kind of died out, people started buying them up and racing them competitively. They're really good cars for endurance racing. It's a very balanced car. It's got enough power where you can go pretty quickly, but not enough where you're gonna really get into trouble if you make a big mistake. Um, and it's just a really nice car to drive. So a good learning car. Very good learning car, yep. Right. And parts, that's, oh, yep, go oh, ahead. <laughs> yeah, so parts, it's a Mustang. So they made millions of Mustangs. You can get a lot of parts pretty easily. This car's got some stuff on it that you can't really buy, but you know, the big stuff, the engines and you know, stuff like that is pretty easy to find. That's smart, and that's a lot of the reason why I'm in the Fiesta and why I rally a Fiesta. It's a good starting car. It's you know more than just a intro intro car. We've spent a bit of money on it, but it's something that it allows me to grow as a driver and really test my limits. And I haven't hit the capability of my car yet, right? <laughs> and it sounds like that's the same for you in this. Yeah, I mean we can definitely push this car to its limits pretty nice. well, and it's just one of those cars that really is easy to drive at the limit for a long period of time, which is why we decided to do endurance racing with it. Okay, cool. Well, let's get under the hood a little bit and check out the differences between these cars. All right, so not a whole lot going on under here. It's pretty much stock. Uh, most of what we're doing is actually just removing parts that don't need to be there uh, to get them out of the way, make it more serviceable. Uh, we do a few upgrades. Um, the engine mounts, we break the engine mounts all the time in these, so we've changed those. Uh, upgraded those a lot and we've had no issues. Um, we've changed the, the charge pipes on this, something that gets a little bit better flow, um, so we get some better air going into the engine. Uh, we take the battery out, we put that back behind the driver's seat. We add uh, an oil cooler, a larger radiator, because these don't uh, get a great air flow, so they definitely need some help with that. Um, these grills up here, actually half of them are blocked off with the, the plastic to hide that bumper beam. Uh, so one thing we have to do is take the grill apart and we actually shave down the back side of that to allow more airflow there. Uh, and this is sufficient how it is. If we wanted to go one step further to, to increase the cooling on this, uh, if we had a built engine or anything like that, we would probably take the bumper beam off and make a tubular bumper beam that's a little bit more low profile, hidden behind the bumper cover itself, uh, so we have better airflow to the radiator. Um, we also have these big lights on the front, right? We do a lot of racing at night, so we definitely need to uh, be able to see where we're going. Uh, straightforward, also our side lights tipped out a little bit because we're doing a lot of sliding in the corners, so we still need to see down the roads. And then you'll also see uh, the big gnarly skid plate underneath there. A lot of the factory components on this in the front end, uh, the, the rad support and everything is plastic. So to mount the front of the skid plate, we needed to make our own metal subframe for that as well. Uh, and then the back of the skid plate is just mounted to the, sub, to the original subframe itself. Uh, so not a lot going on in here, just a few upgrades kind of as we see fit that, uh, that needs to be attended to, but it's pretty straightforward. About 200 horsepower, I think these are stock. Uh, stock mapping, uh, stock internals, everything. It's very reliable, so it works well, and it's about the right power that we like uh, for not spinning too much tires as we're driving down the road. Yeah, for rally specifically in two-wheel drive, because we're on loose surface, a lot more power isn't actually a huge advantage with two-wheel drive. Yeah, absolutely. It so we're, we're going to spend more money to get more other advantages in this car, which we'll go over in a minute. But let's move over to the Mustang, and I guess you need a lot of money up front for <laughs> uh, pavement driving. So this thing's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's a 
you could say it's full America mode, right? No, who, who doesn't like a roaring V8? So just like the, the Fiesta, it's not, the engine itself isn't very tuned. Um, they are, this one is blueprinted and sealed by Roush. So there's actually a little seal on here. Um, it's kind of a rare thing for these cars. But apart from the, that, the internals are pretty much all the same. Um, it makes about 350 horsepower. So, you know, enough to have some fun, but not too much. Um, like they were saying on the Fiesta, it does have upgraded cooling components. The big one is this aluminum expansion tank. Obviously, hours and hours of high performance driving in the summertime when it's 100 degrees outside is a huge strain on that system. So everything cooling wise has been really beefed up to really handle all, all that extra stress. Apart from that, it's a 4.6 liter naturally aspirated V8. Um, and yeah, it's got some cool headers and a cool exhaust on it. That's awesome. Well, why don't we lift these cars up and look, get a look underneath. All right, so uh, the tires we're gonna run on this rally car, uh, it's actually a very small wheel. So we're gonna run a 15 inch wheel because we want a lot of sidewall um, on this tire. We're hitting rocks, we're hitting jumps, we're sliding through uh, ruts and things like that. So we want a lot of uh, flex, a lot of give in this sidewall uh, and we wanna protect that rim. We don't want that rim sticking way out here and, and damaging that when we're sliding around into stuff. Uh, so we have a lot of sidewall here and it's steel belts running all the way from bead to bead on this. So it's a super strong tire. Uh, so if you get a flat while you're on stage, if you're close to the end of the stage, you can just keep going instead of stopping and, and having to change it during that stage. Um, the tread itself is a great design. Most of the time, uh, a rally gravel tire is going to be a directional. Um, but we can do cool things with tire groovers. You know, we can cut in our own treads or open things up depending on if it's muddy. Uh, we can buy different compounds uh, for different times of year than when we're racing for hotter, colder temperatures or depending on the kind of uh, surface that we're driving on, if it's a harder or softer dirt. Uh, lots of cool things. You can also buy them in different sizes. This is a pretty smaller uh, size for a gravel tire because we're using a smaller powered front wheel drive car. If we put a big mean tire on this, we're going to rob a lot of that power. Uh, but if you had a, you know, a four wheel drive, big turbo car, you wouldn't want these little tiny things on there because right. uh, you can use the traction of a bigger tire on those more powerful cars. But these things have uh, sharp edges. This is a used tire, but it's still in all right shape. Um, the sharp edges, these things are incredible for uh, braking, accelerating, all while turning and, and, and just really going down the road fast. It's amazing how much grip you have with these tires on good dirt. And not only the, the, the wheel or the tire, but the actual wheel itself too is uh, typically a harder wheel, something that we're actually potentially hitting rocks and things on the sides of the, the rally stages. So these wheels themselves are beefy as well, right? Yeah, they're a very, very rugged aluminum wheel. Um, they're designed so that uh, even if you do, they're, they're not just gonna bend really hard and get wrapped around the, the brakes or anything like that. They're gonna bend, they might crack and let some of the air out, but you'll still be able to drive on them and get it back to us mechanics to fix them. Uh, so they are a very, very strong aluminum wheel. They're not like what you're gonna see on uh, any car you go buy from a dealership or something like that. Yeah, and so from a cost perspective, 350 to $400 per tire, you know, kind of same ballpark for the rim. Um, and that's kind of what is on the rally setup. Tyler, what are you running on the pavement there, bud? So the big difference is obviously the compound of the tire. This compound is very soft. Um, in the series, we are running this car and we're actually limited by our tires. So we're limited to a 200 tread wear tire. Um, you could put, you know, full on racing slicks on, but the last race we did, we couldn't do that. So we ran, we chose to go with these. They are uh, Bridgestones. Pretty good. They, this tire's got about 12 hours of use on it. So they hold up pretty well, you know, like that's 12 hours of racing use wow. in, uh, in dry conditions, not even in the wet. So they hold up pretty good. Um, they don't really like get too hot and then lose grip or anything like that. Hmm. The other difference is obviously the wheel. Um, these are big, but they're pretty lightweight and they're also very strong. Um, what do you think, is it? I think these are actually, yeah, I think the rally tires have here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt it. <laughs> so they're, they're probably not as beefy as the ones on the rally car, but you know, these ones are also, they're a forged aluminum wheel. You know, you can go jump in this car off of curbs and nice. maybe not jump in it like you would on a stage rally, but you can these take some- hitting things. Right, like yeah, yeah. You have less abrupt, sharp hits. Exactly, like so they're very strong as well, but 
not quite the strength of that. The other difference is the sidewall on the tire. These have a lot of flex, right? You really want this tire to squish into the pavement to give you a much bigger contact patch. Mm -hmm. So that's also why we have a really soft compound so that tire can really squish into the, into the track essentially and really give you a lot of grip. The other thing you'll notice is just how much wider this is. This is, <laughs> right, two, almost, almost two. twice as wide. Yeah. So you have a much bigger contact patch, and on the pavement, the more contact, the faster you're going, right? Mm -hmm. We don't really care about being able to slide the car around so much. We want to be able to really get some grip. Constant grip. So let's talk about suspension. So we got brakes and suspension. Yeah, so uh, this car, we actually just put on a uh, Willwood caliper um, and a two-piece rotor setup. Uh, works pretty good. We like it. It makes it so it's uh, easy to replace that rotor. Uh, so the brakes are pretty sweet. Uh, we have Riger suspension on this. Riger is one of the top brands out there um, that's used in rally. Uh, this is one of the more economy suspension setups of what kind of the best thing that you can buy. Um, about $2,500 per corner for the shock and spring setup. Uh, but this stuff is very adjustable, high speed, low speed compression, rebound adjustment. Uh, we can change springs, we can change ride height. Uh, they're very, very awesome. Um, we got these from M Sport, um, so they were already set up and everything, and they're already valved kind of at that baseline of where they wanted it. Um, they're already set up, so we can, uh, we, we do have to modify our um, sway bar end links and things like that in order to, to work with them. Um, but they're a really, really solid kit for this car. So the brakes were $1,000 a corner? Uh, I haven't looked at the numbers, but yeah, it might be somewhere around there. Yeah. And then the suspension, another 2500 Control arms, axle, we, we have upgraded axles? Uh, this does have upgraded axles on the car. Uh, when you upgrade the suspension on these things, uh, the factory um, drive shaft on this side, that, that half shaft, uh, gets very close and rubs here. You can see this one already is too. Uh, I got a little brake fluid on there. Uh, you can see that this one already is rubbing too. So when we're jumping and we're hitting things, it lines up perfectly on the stock ones where it'll peel that boot rate apart every time and that drive shaft is gonna fail pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, the, the control arm on this, it's a stock control arm. Uh, we keep it nice and cheap. You could absolutely uh, knock out these uh, ball joints and put in some, some hind joints to get, get everything a little bit tighter. Uh, but these things actually hold up pretty well and we keep it cheap. Um, you don't hit many things, so we're not like, it's not like I'm changing them often for you. Uh, the big thing that we do have to do, since it is a stock ball joint and it's very, very close to the brakes out here, uh, a little, little trick for some people, I just put a little red RTV on that rubber and it keeps the heat off of it. It works really well. It'll make that ball joint last a lot longer. If that wasn't there and you went out the first time these brakes got hot, it would just destroy the rubber on that joint and it would wear out pretty quickly. So yeah, so we just make it durable and not spend too much money doing it. It seems to be an always balancing act in racing is obviously budget time and, and having a good enough mechanic kind of knows what they're doing to know that where to cut, make cuts and right. where to spend the money. And Obviously, you've got a much different setup, but it actually looks very similar on your car comparatively, right? It is very similar. Um, it's just bigger. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other big difference that you'll see that you probably wouldn't want on a rally car is we have these brake ducts, okay. right? So air flows in through, the, through here, you can stick your whole hand in there. In a rally car, it would suck up a bunch of dirt, but it's pumping all this fresh air straight onto the brakes to really help keep them cool. Um, and then we have these big Brembo rotors, right? It's all about being able to slow the car down with a lot more grip. So we need a lot more surface area on the rotor and on the pad to really get the car to slow down. But you know, it's very similar, right? We have a similar style slotted rotor, two piece, four, pi four piston uh, calipers. So essentially it's just a bigger version of what you have on the rally car. Yeah. And some decent suspension, right? Like you're dealing with absorbing bumps and stuff in yeah. the road. So the, it's very, as far as the construction, it's pretty similar to a rally car. Mm -hmm. um, it just doesn't have the same amount of travel, right? That thing, you can really jack it up and yeah. get it pretty high. You know, this has got all the same settings and things you can change. These ones were provided by Ford Motorsports, like Ford Racing. So similar to that, they came pre-valved, pretty good to go. Um, and then you can make all the same adjustments as well. All right, so now we're going to talk about protection, underbody protection, things we do to strengthen the car. Obviously the rally car is going to have a lot more, so we'll start with this because there's not as much. Um, big one, we have this big old splitter. Um, it's just hard plastic. It's to get some downforce on the front of the car. And apart from that, there's not very much. We have a little skid plate right here to protect the oil pan and the transmission with a nice little cross brace. 
And you know, we have the beefed up sway bar with reinforced brackets on the uh, subframe. So all that would be definitely reinforced. And then if we go down the car, we have these uh, the square stock welded into the seams of the car to help really reinforce it. And then this car was also completely gutted before the cage was put in it. And all the little seams and everything were really welded up really tight to really reinforce the car and really ensure that we can beat on it for a long time and not have a major critical failure. Right, so uh, the rally car driving down gravel roads, running over rocks and ruts and ditches and things like that, obviously needs a lot more protection. So we have this big gnarly skid plate on the front here, uh, coming all the way through the back, covering your engine, your transmission, uh, it's protecting your axles, it's doing some protection to your suspension and everything. Um, but we are trapping a lot of heat when we do that, so we, we place some holes in here to allow some of that heat to escape in a place where it's not a very dangerous spot. Uh, so we get some of that heat out there. Um, as we move back, you can see uh, we have the mud flaps are required legally to have the mud flaps on the car, um, but we'd want to anyway. We're doing a lot of spinning, uh, so we're throwing gravel. Gravel spray is ridiculous with rally cars, uh, and those tires, they just throw the dirt. So uh, we want to use these to knock all that dirt down and protect it from just absolutely destroying the bottom side of these cars. Uh, along with that, you'll see we have uh, this thinner plastic. We'll spread that plastic all throughout underneath the car here. Again, plastic is just cheap and easy to replace. The gravel that we're throwing will wear away the metal on the car very quickly. Um, this is a large investment into the chassis of this car, um, so we want to protect it at all costs. So we'll definitely uh, use plastic everywhere we can. Uh, coming to the back, they're not on right now, but we would have uh, some extra beam flaps that would help protect the rear suspension of the car as well. Uh, just again, knocking all that dirt down. We do have rear mud flaps on. Um, they do require it because in rally racing, you're not racing door to door with other people. Um, but you know, if you have a problem, someone else might catch you. Uh, so you still want to have those rear flaps there. So if someone is following you, you're not just going to absolutely pepper them with rocks and whatnot. So this is one piece that's actually stock that is getting all that that spray, but it, it, there's only a wheel well above it, right? Like we, we store the rally tire up there, but we don't protect that. We wanna make as few pit stops as possible. So a lot of racing series, you have a limit per stint of a driver. So a lot of times it's between two or three hours. So we want it to be able to run this car flat out on a high speed track and not have to stop for fuel because that's just wasting time. Okay. So we have our factory saddle tank here, which is a 15 gallon you know, just a regular old fuel tank like any other Mustang. And then actually up above, we'll drop the car down and show you guys, we have another fuel cell that runs in tandem with this. So we can run about two and a half to three hours depending on what track we're at. So we also have another fuel cell right in here. Um, it's actually the same brand as the one in the Fiesta. Um, this is another 20 gallon fuel cell. So basically there's a little transfer pump in here. After about 45 minutes of running, we would push a little switch inside the car and it'll pump the fuel that's in this cell into the other tank and uh, run off that fuel pump basically. So it's a quick and dirty way of putting a bunch more fuel in a car and really being able to have pretty efficient fuel stops. The other thing is we have two fuel doors, right? We have to fill this one up and that one separately. So we have a fuel door here, which is kind of a finicky thing to open up. And then we have, you know, our factory fuel tank here. So to fill our car up with fuel, well, we can't use our fuel filler anymore because the fuel tank's gone. So what we ended up having to do is we run the system inside the car. And Jared, tell us a little bit about these. Right, so uh, we don't want to have to be fueling way down in there. So we have two dry brakes up here, um, one for the fill, one for the vent. Uh, and then we have our special Stobley connectors that we can clip right on there and we can pump fuel into the car pretty quickly. Uh, this tank will hold 15 gallons and that's sufficient enough for uh, most legs uh, that a rally car will have to drive on before coming back to uh, service. Um, if they do run longer sections or there's long transits, they'll do a remote refuel where us mechanics will bring uh, 5 or 10 gallons of fuel out to an area and kind of meet them on the side of the road uh, in a designated area and refuel the car. Um, so we kind of get those breaks where it doesn't count against us. We're able to, to add some more fuel back into this car. All right, so interior-wise, obviously we are missing a seat if we were going to go rallying. We don't have a co-driver here, so we have space to put, you know, a fire bottle. We have space to put, normally they're in here, there's a little cooler with a little water pump. Um, that would be for a cool suit. 
So this would be our little controller for that. Um, this is a little PLC type of thing. It's a little power supply for all the special little pumps. We have a special diff pump in the back of this car to help keep the uh, transmission and differential fluid nice and cool. We also have a secondary power supply down here for you know GoPro cameras or if we needed to plug in something. We have very easy access to do that right down there. Um, we also normally would have our radios kind of bolted to the floor here so that we could make a quick adjustment while driving. If you lost connection or something like that, you could reset the whole system very quickly and efficiently. Um, we also in here have what's called an aim dash. So this basically has all of our information on the car. So it would have our oil temperature, cooling temperature. It also has a lap predictor. So you can actually put in the GPS coordinates of the racetrack and it will somehow predict how fast that your optimal lap time can be. So if that's what you're into, you can really chase the lap times based on sectors and stuff like that. Um, this is really cool. It does have a lot of cool information that you can plug into it. You got a fire kill, uh, kill switch on the left, top left. Oh, yeah. So we have our kill switch right here. So just a master kill switch. And then right here is our fire, our fire control. So if the car was ever to catch on fire, we can quickly pull this and the whole car is going to go up in, you know, the fire bottle stuff and you'd have want to get out pretty quickly, but it will save your life definitely in a very quick situation. And pretty much everything you need is on a switch. And yeah, so everything you, we need is on a switch. So it's we have, super easy and with glo driving gloves and everything on, you can just... Exactly. So these switches are all very easy to hit, right? If you have a big thick glove on or something like that, you can make a quick adjustment. So like this one's the one for that fuel tank we were talking about. You just flip that up, bam, now it's pumping fuel in and you're good to go. Same thing if we need to turn our lights on right there. We need our wipers on really fast, same thing. High beam, low beam, it's all right here. So you just quickly move your hand over. It's no big deal. You don't have to fumble around looking for stuff. These also actually glow in the dark a little bit. So when you're driving at night, you can actually see what switch you need to get. Because there's big glares driving racing at nighttime. Because unlike rally, there will be they can be a hundred cars on a racetrack. So all these bright lights shining in off your mirrors and stuff can really be a big, uh, big distraction. So we want quick, easy ways to make things happen without having to think about it too much. And what kind of gearbox is that? Is that just a standard gearbox? Yeah, it's just a standard uh, Tremec gearbox, five-speed manual, nothing special. The uh, they're super strong from the factory, so no need to really change it that much. It does have a relatively special um, locking rear differential with adjustable ramping and stuff like that, but that's some more advanced setup things that you don't necessarily have to get into um, unless you really know what you're getting into. And are your pedals stock too? I can't see those. Ah, uh, the pedals, they're, you know, they're an aftermarket aluminum pedal. They're nothing special. It's not like a crazy tilt in box like you would have in a rally car so they're pretty not much they're pretty much stock. <laughs> <laughs> still in the stock um let's look at the roll cage so something different for the roll cage design uh, you guys have to hit worry about door-to-door -door action right yeah so that would be most drivers worst fear would be having a car trying to park in your lap okay. right you don't want another mustang trying to come in here so we have these big door bars that's a big protection thing and you know rollovers they happen once in a while but it's probably not as common as you would see in rally cars right so this cage is definitely very strong but it's compared to some of the r5 stuff out there it's, it's not, not yeah nice. you don't have an x on the roof that we have and a few other things that because we are assuming more rollover type damage and um that's that's interesting but very very beefy roll cage still yeah it's definitely a it you're, you're it. <laughs> what kind of speeds are you dealing with uh, that depends on our track. Um, if we're at a high speed track like VIR or Watkins Glen or like Daytona, 150, something like that, maybe a little bit faster. So definitely, if something goes wrong at those speeds, you want the right safety <laughs> equipment. <laughs> yeah, nothing, no special door cards, nothing fancy. You don't have like, you know, you just, these are empty doors and makes yep, it just easy. empty doors. You know, you could get a, uh, like a carbon fiber skin or something like right. that if you want to That's, be fancy, but. Yeah. You know, no Some need. people do. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely plenty of people who do that stuff, but it's just one more thing that... Not an expense you need if exactly. you want to just get to go racing. Exactly. Cool. Well, yeah, let's take a look at the difference of the rally car. 
So the Fiesta for the dash and kind of the, the imaging is still just the stock Fiesta dash, but well, everything kind of underneath is where Jared spent a lot of time trying to make things work, right, Jared? Right. Yeah, so uh, when you just look in, nothing looks that different, but uh, this dash is actually just the top skin. Uh, we got everything underneath it because it's a lot of heavy, bulky stuff that we want to get out of the way. Uh, we'll run our own heater box. We do still need to have uh, a heat source for a blower because we're racing in damp and wet temp, uh, wet conditions. So we need to keep that windshield clean. Um, all of our controls, uh, we're still going to use the, since we have the stock ECU, uh, the stock body control module in this car, uh, we're using the stock dash. All those controls are the same. Anything that's not needed, we'll get rid of them. And we do have a, uh, a control panel here where we can uh, start the car from it and we can have our, uh, our lights, our horn, we control our blower here. It's just a pretty basic thing uh, with some three-way switches so we can control. Um, we can have just two of the lights on or four of the lights, so we have a lot of control there. Um, and our, our fuel pump as well, our, uh, our fuel send the, the gauge. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, our fuel gauge is underneath, and that's actually something I asked to have moved because it was up above, and it was so distracting in my line of sight when I was driving, I actually asked them to put it down because I don't need to know in the moment if my fuel is going to run out. I just want to be able to look down after if I'm driving slow and see if my fuel is not in the right spot. Um, for, you know, just a stock gearbox, we had the uh, a modified handbrake here. And so that's just, again, the red tape makes it easier. As I'm sitting in my car, fully pushed back in the seat, I can just visually tell the difference really quickly out of the corner of my eye rather than having to fully look at it. Um, with us, our fire system's actually activated on a push button. And I actually put a piece of tape over that as well because there was a mistake one day. A uh, big glove didn't quite know where my hand was and, and we uh, got to set that bad boy off. Oh shit. Um, but yeah, so really for us, the, the rally car too, the roll cage design, uh, our roll cage has a big X in the middle and a big X in the roof, a little more gusseting than the, than the Mustang. Um, because, yeah, trees and, and rollovers and things that uh, we hit at high speeds, um, diff just a little bit different uh, than what they're dealing with in the pavement, right? Yeah, absolutely. This We're, we're not so much worried about car-to-car uh, -car contact or anything like that, um, but these cars, they are flying down roads. I mean, you're, you're not seeing 150 miles an hour, but there's definitely stints where you're going to see 100, 110, and you're flying down a back road. Uh, and this cage is designed in a way where um, we don't care about the cage, we care about the people inside. So it is designed in a way where if you take a hard hit here, it is going to spread out that force throughout the entire roll cage. It's not just going to take one impact and you replace one bar and you're racing again. It is designed, this is going to crumple a little, that's going to crumple, that's going to crumple. Uh, because if I'm sitting here, I mean, I'm not a very tall guy, but you get some taller people in here, their helmet is just inches away from this cage. So if that moves very much, people are going to get hurt pretty bad. So it's definitely designed in a way where uh, y you can replace, you can really cut out and replace most of the roll cage in these cars, and we do. We have so much time invested into chassis prep on these things um, that if we do take big hits and damage the roll cage, we'll replace pretty much the entire roll cage before we would start fresh with a new car. So, you know, and uh, let's talk a little bit about just the rally specific stuff. So we've got you in the car with me. Yeah. So uh, there's a whole nother seat. There's a setup for actually having a co-driver. You have a little co-driver computer there next to you. There's just some assets that are in the car. Um, we have tools and equipment in the car because we actually can work on the car on stage. If something happens, we've got a spare tire. We have some tools. Uh, being able to change a link, right? And that was kind of one of the things that we've talked about um, that, that just happens to fail um, that I could do on stage with basic set of tools. Right, yeah. So rally racing is endurance racing as well, just a different style endurance than, uh, than, than the long time track racing kind of thing. Um, you really do in order to finish the race or to win the race, you need to finish the race. Uh, and rally is brutal on the car. It's brutal on the, the driver and co-driver. So um, as well as you need to be prepared, there's a lot of things that we need to do in the shop to make the car handle the abuse. That's why we spend so much time trying to make them durable. But we're still going to send you with some tools and some spare parts because uh, at the end of the day, some small mistakes or even just, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Things break. you got to be able to fix it. Otherwise, you're walking out of the woods and 
uh, you spent a lot of money and you're going home <laughs> unhappy. Well, let's jump out and talk to Tyler just a little bit more about the difference between rally and, and endurance racing here. So one of the biggest differences that we really have between rally and track racing with our rally car build is that we have to spend so much time keeping everything in the car to make sure it can be street legal and get past inspection. Whereas when, when we go track racing, we can take a lot out of the car and spend the time focusing on making sure that car will be perfect for the track. Really, this is one of the biggest differences between these two cars and where you'll actually spend a lot of money. We bought a car from a dealership to make the rally car where Tyler was able to get a car that they built from the factory to go to a track. So that's where you can actually spend a lot of money and spend. A, a, there's a big difference between going rally racing and racing on the track. So ultimately, guys, we're just talking about racing, right? So the difference between what we're trying to do with the rally car versus what you're trying to do with the pavement car, we have to work on our car. You have to work on your car. We've got to make sure we get to the end of the, the race, the stage. you got to make get to the end of the race. You get to pass by your crew every few minutes. <laughs> we have to be out in the woods and have the tools and equipment to be able to do that. But, you know, one of the things that I thought was really cool is the downforce and the stuff you have to deal with in this car. The wing's just awesome as a, you know, any... <laughs> Red-blooded Americans gotta like the Wang, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it, it, it does. It, it gives you some good downforce. You know, it's not like this big necessary thing. It's kind of more. It's very flashy. It looks really cool. Right. It does. It is functional. It does. It's about 500 pounds of downforce, so it is you know a fairly significant amount. But you could totally go racing without one and be competitive. It's not like the big a big deal <laughs> and honestly like the roof scoop you see a lot of rally cars with roof scoops and for me the heat management of myself we actually did a video with alan moody about this like that it was an investment in my ability to stay cool in the car and that was worth having so just a little difference for me is having that that big roof scoop on there and, and actually getting that airflow in the cabin made a big difference and then like and when really dusty stages the, the, my car fills with dust, I can open those vents more and it actually blows the dust in the back of my car. So just weird little differences I have to deal with, with versus what yeah. you have to do. I think, I think a roof scoop on this thing would be a cool <laughs> and addition. A and it, big it might, wang it on, on that thing would be a pretty cool <laughs> thing. I think we all, what would every other, what everyone else has, so that <laughs> exactly. would be pretty fun. Um, well, cool, guys. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions on the difference between the two cars, uh, let us know if you guys are interested in going racing and if you'd rather have a rally car or rather go endurance racing. And uh, we'd love to do more videos, so please give us comments and questions on things you'd like to know about the differences of these cars, and we'll shoot some more videos for you. But Jared, Tyler, thanks, guys. Thank you for working your ass off here at the business, too, and we get to do fun stuff like this. So hopefully you guys join us here at the Rally School someday, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks.